The following interview was conducted with Lucille, Lucille Maris, the widow of Jim Maris, the founder and, and first head of the School of the Department of Aviation Technology for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, October 16, 2009 at her residence. Also sitting in is her daughter, Vicki. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Thank you, Thank Mrs. You. Maris, and welcome. Well, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. Well, I, I actually was born on a farm, and I lived there for a couple of years, but I lived outside of Urbana, Illinois um, until I was in high school, and then I went to Urbana High School, okay. and I only attended one semester at U of I, University of Illinois, but then I went to Illinois you, Business what was College. High school, what was high school like? Was it a large school? I came from a one-room schoolhouse to a school that had 800 kids. It That's was, a big leap. <laughs> it was an interesting change. I knew one other person in the school when I, and she happened to have also come from my grade school. Um, but uh, I got along fine. I know. Okay. Uh, the first year I took speech, which was a stupid thing to do because I was too scared really to do speech at that point in my <laughs> life. But uh, but you got through it. But. I got through the speech course. I got through the high school. Okay. <laughs> okay. I only went to University of Illinois one semester, and then I went to U in the Illinois Business College, and that was my career path. And okay. So, um, I had met Jim um, my senior year in high school. Was he in the same high school that you? No, oh. he went to Champaign High School, which is kind of like Lafayette, West Lafayette, as far as the com competition of two are concerned, but. Um, we met through mutual friends of his and mine that were also dating, and uh, then we all ended up going to the same church and stuff. So, so from there, our life progressed, and and uh, we went on together, right? Well, this was, that was in 1940, and we were married in January 43. So okay, okay. Then tell us a little about what came next. Then was he at? at uh, did he go to the university? He was at the University of Illinois until he enlisted in the Air Force, as you know, back in '41 and two after Pearl Harbor. Many of the young men knew that they were going to be drafted anyway. So, and he wanted to be in the Air Force. He wanted to be a pilot if at all possible. So, he enlisted in the Air Force and did that through Chanute Field, which was at Rantoul, just. 12 miles up the road from us, and um, then he was stationed in... Um, we, you were married by that time? We were not married. Okay. Uh, he was stationed in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and then on in Montgomery, Alabama, and that's where we were married in, when he was in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. So, Did he come uh, home? Did you get married at home? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you might say I eloped, although a couple people suspicioned his dad being one of them that we might get married, and we did, so. That's okay. She took the train <laughs> down to Mobile. Oh, okay. Yeah, I took the train to Montgomery, Alabama. I had never gone any place out of the city by myself before. And you got on the train by yourself, huh? I went to Montgomery mm -hmm. by myself. Um, and then I came back home because he was sent on to another base in, in Georgia at that point. And I came back home and uh, worked I can't remember a month or so, and then I joined him when he was finished with his training in in Georgia, which was about two months after we were married. Cadets were not; he was a cadet at that time, and we were cadets were not supposed to be married, but several of them were. So, and I'm sure some of them probably even um, were married when they joined. But, but uh, you know, the the Air Force, the, well, it was called the Army Air Corps at that time, but they looked the other way in that situation. So um, so we spent a really nice week in Georgia with this, um, the lady, the home we were in, the lady, had, the husband had been the mayor of uh, Douglas, Georgia, and um, Jim didn't have any flight responsibility that last week because he'd already completed his work. So there was another couple, and the four of us really just had a nice week together. Um, and this lady was a very gracious southern lady, and uh, she would have us for dinner, which was very formal, and she had, of course, maids, and uh, she would always call to dinner with her little bell. It was really 
That's quite an experience. Kind of a, something new for you. <laughs> Absolutely, because I grew up in a small town from a large family, and and that Just, was not the way I grew up. <laughs> so, and well, then did, uh, what happened? When did he go on? What came well, next? Well, then he was moved from base to base. Sure. Every two months, he would be transferred. We came from Dor Douglas up to uh, Vincennes, in Indiana. Um, and at that point, there was a flood in Vincennes, and his um, air base was at Lawrence, Lawrence, what is it, Lawrenceville, Lawrenceburg. Lawrenceburg or something like that. I think. Uh, anyway, in the southern part of Illinois. Yeah. Um, and uh, they couldn't get to the base, and they had um, come in on the train, and they couldn't get to the base because of the flood. So they were stationed in the armory, and I had driven up with two other wives, and we had found an apartment across the street from the armory, and it turned out that the, the cadets were stationed or put in the armory, which was quite a surprise to our husbands to see us waving to them across the street, and all the other cadets thought, oh, wow, they're really fast guys, you know. <laughs> oh, don't put them in it. <laughs> but, it had different connotations in that. Ed, ed, edit that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, they, they were there for two or three days before they were able to get some big sure. army trucks to get them back to the base and then they had to go out and fill sandbags to keep the air base from flooding so sure. um, but he graduated as a pilot at that point and uh -huh. then after that we moved to Columbus in uh, Ohio for two months and then I don't know where'd we go next Salt Lake City and Casper, it's nice that you were able to Casper, go with him, Wyoming wow. and uh, the unique story about Casper, Wyoming, he was, they were sent as co-pilots, but in in Ohio they had been trained as first pilots on B-17s, and then they were sent as co-pilots up in Casper on a B-24, which is, they're both big four-engine airplanes, but, um, so they were almost through that period up there when the commander of the base found out they were, somebody was writing checkpoint one evening and and said to my husband, why did you fly the bomb range or something? I can't remember exactly what it was. Do you remember what Dad said mm -hmm. that was? Anyway, he said, well, we were trained to do that in a B-17, and so-and-so, the pilot, which was the first officer, had never done it before, so, so he did it, you know? And so when they landed, this uh, guy that was flying with him reported this to the base commander, and, and Jim always said the words that he wouldn't say to, I wouldn't say to you, but he was really angry. And so on Christmas Eve, we were transferred to Colorado Springs because they wanted to send those first pilots, the B-17 pilots, down to have their own crew and everything. So we had, my friend and I shared an apartment and uh, we had used all of our food stamps to uh, buy food for Christmas dinner and all that. And so we were transferred on Christmas Eve. So they put us, the wives, on a troop train, and there was one wife that had her mom and her little dog, but they put us all on one train, one car, one car. And, and told us not to look out the windows because we weren't supposed to be on the train. And uh, when they pulled into Colorado Springs, they cut our car off so that we didn't go in with the rest of the cadets. And so that was an experience of trying to find housing which was always an experience any base you went to. The oh, housing yeah. was so scarce, and oh, yes. you all were lucky to get. In one one place, I had a sleeping room, no cooking privileges, and I this was in Columbus, and I would have to go downtown on the trolley to eat my meals and stuff. But um, always housing was tight, and you usually, if you're lucky, you got an apartment that you maybe could share the kitchen and the bath with some other couple or something. So. But that was kind of the way it was. Right. What a what an interesting experience. That's very. And then Jim was awarded. He and his crew were awarded a, a B twenty four after they were finished with their training to fly overseas. So they flew from um, where was I in Colorado okay. Springs right. to Topeka, and we drove. Some of the wives drove to Topeka and met them in Topeka, and. Two or three days in a row they were supposed to take off and they didn't because of weather. And finally the day they took off, my husband was not a, 
a daredevil pilot, but he flew, we were up on top floor of the hotel, and he flew down even with the hotel and waved his Gave wings way, right. to let us know that they were really going that day. So that, but, and then on the way to Florida, they, they were headed to Florida and their plane was hit by lightning and they lost all their controls as far as radio and stuff. And, and uh, the people on the ground at the base in Florida really yelled at them when they landed and everything. And why didn't you call in da da da? And they said, well, you know, we couldn't. So then they flew on. That's to electronics. Dad, Dad used to say that some of the worst action that they saw was that flight yeah. into Florida. Right. Yeah. Because well, the weather was so bad mm -hmm. and it really right. electricity, the lightning really scares you. Then they flew on down to South America to fly across to Africa. And, and um, again, it was really bad weather. It was pouring and night after night they didn't think they would take off, but one night they did in a really heavy rainstorm. And um, they didn't know they were kind of pioneering the way to fly from South America to Africa without landing in the ascensions for refueling and stuff, but um, they didn't a bit because that was their, that was what they were supposed to do. But um, anyway, I don't think I'll tell her the story about Herbie. No. <laughs> uh, he had a really neat crew, and and they all and he worked. Was the he was the chief on this. Or yeah, at least he, was, these B he was the first. What B seventeen? No, it was a B twenty four. Oh, B twenty four. They Sorry. they changed when they came, went from Casper down to Colorado Springs from the B seven from the B seventeen to B twenty fours. I don't mean that. From Ohio, they were in B seventeens. Then when they went to Casper, they were in B twenty fours. But from then on, he was in B twenty fours. But anyway, when they landed in Africa, the people came running out and were so happy that they got there and everything, and they couldn't figure out why the enthusiasm, well, you're the first plane that's made it with, without crashing, so, you know, without stopping in it. Without touching down for refueling. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's they, interesting, though. they really proceeded on up the coast and ended up in England. And that's where they were supposed to go, where they were trying the right, South America-Africa right. run first. Uh, uh -huh. He has a neat story about how they flew through a pass that they weren't supposed to go through, too, but I won't bother you with that. Yeah. The B-24, did they, they had uh, guns on those planes, too, didn't they? Machine oh, guns as well, the whole absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. And the turret up one of the ones uh, over there. And the I belly below. Yeah. All that, yeah. Right. So. Um, then for then, me, was that his base of... Then did you go he, back home, or uh, I went back home from Topeka because okay. I didn't go to Florida because they were on their way sure. to Europe at that point. So. Okay, um, and um, of course, in the war, I mean, he flew the missions and all that. Was he based in England then? He was based in Windling, England. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he and he flew thirty missions in about three plus months, as I remember the timing. But it wow. was really quick. Not much time off between times, but. Uh, were you able to, to, could he touch base with you? Did he call, could you call? Of course not. Oh. A letter, and it would be about three weeks after the fact, and letters at that time were censored, so, you That's know, it was just. I, I get interested listening to young parents and spouses today complaining if they can't get a text message or an email from their military family member when only because I've heard my mom tell these stories. I, I'm not saying that it hurts any less or more. Or it's, but it was very just, hard. You know, absolutely, it was a completely different story. No, no I just phone. remember when the Gulf War happened here, what now, ten more than 10 years ago, right. um, and how the news was always talking about these wives and their husbands be gone and all this, and, and but they could communicate with them, I mean, and which we couldn't at all, of course. Right. And, uh, so that was none and of, of course he didn't get home he didn't get home until the war was over or what or did he stay oh no oh. he got home before the war was over um he allowed his crew to come home and he stayed behind because he thought he'd had enough of fighting the war and he knew if they came home as a crew they'd probably be sent to the south pacific and he's not a the chicken, <laughs> but, but he just didn't want to fight any more wars, okay? <laughs> My husband was a kind of a guy who wouldn't step on a bug or a fishing worm or shoot a gun or anything, sure. but, but he was willing to go to war. Right. Um, but no, he stayed on. He stayed on as a tow target pilot. He went to an English base, and to hear him tell that story, that was more 
almost more frightening than the war itself because these the pilots that were trying to shoot for I don't mean the pilots the guys that were trying to shoot the tow targets weren't always very careful <laughs> and so that that's another story mm -hmm. but um, then he came home actually he got home uh, back in the states and to Chicago on our first our second anniversary and I met him in Chicago at my sister's apartment and they weren't going to let him in because he was in uniform and all this and and uh, well they had a guard you know down at the door and stuff but um, my sister had to call down and say yes ma'am please let Lieutenant Maris in <laughs> but um, oh. then we were um, he was home for a couple of weeks and uh, then we got two weeks of r and in, in Florida and we're on, at uh, Miami Beach on the beach in a hotel that at that time the rooms rented I think for $125 and we didn't pay anything for them and of course that was just kind of the reward for what he had done we thought we were going to be stationed in Florida but some higher ranking officer decided he wanted the position they were going to give Jim so we ended up in Tennessee so oh, okay okay but um, that's um, where the little dog came back to us when we lived in Tennessee. Tell us a little story about the dog. How did it, did he adopt the dog in England or? Well, what? he bought the dog. He in bought England. the dog. Oh, he okay. He bought the dog, in and England. he was able to keep a doggy he dog with him. He kept it at the base with him. He bought it. Um, he he had made friends with a, a Bobby a taxi driver, in um, the King Glen, and uh, ended up the first night they had the dog on the base. It was loaded with fleas so he took it back in town and this family kept it and had it defleed for them and then, it, then they took it back to the base so he had it at the base and he would when he was um, after an, an airplane had been repaired he would uh, slow time it and he could take the dog up with him when he did that because he wasn't going on a mission so he had fun doing that oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah so but then, as I told you earlier, he had the dog shipped home. He shipped, took it down to England or London, and it was shipped home. It had to wait until um, a, a chef, a butcher, well, I can't remember, on a ship would accept the dog and some, take care of it. And so we thought when we got the dog in Tennessee, when it got up there, it would be all matted and a mess. It was absolutely beautiful. It had a huge... Um, a big crate cage that they yeah. put it in and it wasn't even in the crate when I picked her up she I had picked her up because Jim was at the base but um, anyway it um, the dog was in top condition so did the dog recognize your husband oh absolutely absolutely because there's been a time differential there no oh. um, I was out walking the dog as he was driving down the street and he stopped and got out and I let go of the dog and it just ran and jumped up over his shoulders. <laughs> yeah. No, it remembered him very oh, much. Sure. So, <laughs> so anyway. Uh, Blondie. Blondie. Yeah. The name Real. of the dog. <laughs> Blondie. It was a Cocker Spaniel and You had that. her for quite a while then? We had her until nineteen what, fifty two, I think. That's pretty and good. Yeah. That's she good. had cancer and, and uh, died of that. Yeah. But um, anyway. Well anyway, after Jim came back from overseas, um, we stayed in the Air Force for until nineteen forty five, I think. Okay. And uh, he was discharged or took leave at that point. And uh, we went back to Urbana for a few months. Um, and then he, we went to Galesburg, Illinois, to a school called Curry, Curry School of Aeronautics, where he did his training for aircraft and uh, engines, which is the mechanical building, the mechanical part of the airplanes, as well as the covering of the wings and sure. stuff that they used to do. Well, maybe they still do. I don't know what they do today. But. Right. But, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But that's why we went to Galesburg, so he could do that training. And then his parents became not well, and we decided we should move back to Champaign-Urbana to be there to help them. And um, so at this time, he thought he was too old to go back to school and finish his BS at University of Illinois, but we, he did. And uh, he, used the, he got the GI Bill then, probably. He got the GI Bill. We would, <laughs> 
we had a brand new house, living on, uh, going to school on the GI Bill, and I had never been able to get pregnant, but I was finally pregnant, so all that, and so he had an extra job while he was going to school. Sure, sure. And uh, then after he graduated, we came here to Purdue. To Purdue. Well, how did, how did it happen to come to Purdue then? Was there an opening, or how did that come um, There was a man that worked at the, uh, on, I think he was on the staff at the University of Illinois at the Illini Air, the Illinois Airport, and they already were going to hire Jim in the fall to work at the airport. To work at the airport. Uh -huh. And this at this time, Jim was selling cars as an extra job. And this man had come in a couple of different times. And Jim finally said to him, and I can't remember the guy's name, but anyway, he said to him, what, what's on your mind? He knew it was more than just coming in for a car problem. And he said, well, Jim, there's an opening over at Purdue, which you kind of fit the bill. You, I think you really ought to go check on it because he didn't really want him not to teach at the University of Illinois, but he thought this was an opportunity. And at that time, Purdue School of Aeronautics was giving up their maintenance and in, in, that, in that part of their the program. school. And so it was under the university, what was that called? University Extension? Cooper the Extension Program, I extension. Dean, I know yeah. Dean Bees was our dean, and Jim, Jim used to tell the story when he came for the interview. Um, uh, Morris Adams was, I don't know what his title was, but he was the assistant to the sure. dean or something. And uh, when Jim sat down to, uh, had showed him his resume and stuff, he just got up and left the room. And Jim said, what's wrong with me, you know? <laughs> but he had gone in to see Dean Bees and he says, this is a man we need. He had aviation experience with his background in the Air Force and his education, da, da, da. So from then on, he was hired and and we came. Okay. And his college degree was in education. His college degree was in education because that's what he Wanted he had done do. his practice teaching at a junior high and sure and that sort of thing. Um, now, would this have been before 1955? Because Abe Tech Department started really in 1955. So this he came before that or no? He came that? in 55. Oh, okay. And this is when okay. it started. Okay. Um, it seems to me like. Carnino, Mr. Carnino was supposed oh, to Larry teach. Larry Carnino. Larry was supposed to teach some of the courses, but it ended up no one from the School of, of um, uh, what, Aviation or Aeronautics. Aero. Aeronautic uh, would did teach, and Jim taught each course. And I I know he just you know he had to cram right before it started because they were all new courses as far as he was right. concerned. And I don't remember the sequence, and maybe. Tom might have told you some of the sequence of how people were hired, but you know, they would hire <laughs> first one person, then another, and and so. Right. Um, where were you located? Was it was it were you out <laughs> at the airport? Was that where classes were? Oh yes. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> and the building was there before you came, right? Absolutely. Well, well he has to because Amelia used Hangar One. <laughs> yeah. That I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, where did you, and uh, there's some history of, it, of that. Where did you? Uh, what was housing like when you came? <laughs> That's it was also was bad. <laughs> that, that was no, why but, I was but laughing. See, you're because used to that. I mean, we can find a room, right? <laughs> Somewhere. Well, no. Uh, remember, we had built a brand new house in Urbana before we came here. And you were pregnant as well. Well, we not came. when we came here. Oh, okay. I had an 11 month old child at oh, that time and a okay. five year old. Okay. Uh, but um, we, I, you probably don't even know what the black and whites were. I've learned. I know. I've heard others okay. have shared those. So I know we lived in the two-story black and whites, and it backed up to Squirrel Park there, and uh, it was terrible because uh, I I came, and I'm not that proud of a person. I've lived in a small town, and I, you know, we lived in a, a farmhouse in Galesburg, so and you know, housing is no problem, but I walked in that house and sat down with this and cried. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. Were they furnished? Were they were furnished? No, oh, they no, not. they weren't furnished. So Jim ended up taking me home, and he oh. came back and painted and cleaned it and f tried to fix it as good as he could. We would our bathtub would freeze water in the bottom of it in the winter time. When it rained, we'd run around with buckets and and towels to catch the drips. And <laughs> I had a rat hole behind the stove, 
um, have memories. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, there's, maintenance was pretty poor. <laughs> maintenance was pretty poor, but I certainly wasn't uh, alone. Actually, I, I have, as a bridge partner today, a lady that was up at the, they were a half circle sort of thing, and I lived on this side, and she lived on the other end of the circle, or half circle. And I, she's my bridge partner today. So I have two really good fringe at, of people sure. that I met at that point. Right. So yeah. all was not bad, but, That's right. but it was, it was uh, not the best. We didn't live there too long. We found a place um, to rent on Littleton Street. It belonged to another Purdue man, A.D. Lasco. He was oh, in Odie the Golden. Lasco. He was in the Golden Shops, and I don't know how Jim met him, but anyway, we ended up renting their place for a while, and eventually we bought the house we lived in for many years on Elm Drive. So. Okay. Well, good. So it's very nice. I don't know why my time is going. No, you're okay. Um, <laughs> you talked about that. Would you want to talk a little bit about some of the awards? I think that William Wheatley Award. Um, was I good. have. Uh, Kind of crisscross some things. There's a picture of actually of Jim getting the award, oh. and there's some stories. There's there okay. was a news release about it, I okay. think, and a, that's the one that I had a copy of. I, I told you last night this was handwritten by President Heavenly. I, I'm sorry, I made a goof. It's typed, but it's hand signed by. That's but that's nice. about the. Those are all things about the very Wheatley nice. Award. Right. Was he surprised when he got that? Oh you gosh, that's so long ago. Oh. I don't remember. But you were there. Much. Were you there? I did not go. Oh, remember, okay. I had a family, and I did not do a lot of going with him okay. with, for things. So, okay. um, but that's very nice. And that had not too long. And then, as the department grew, um, you added more people, probably. Oh yes, the, right. yes. Um, and I can't remember the sequence of things, but Erwin Trigger, who is still living here, right. was uh, the. Um, hired for the engines and Ernest Blatchley of course has died um, and he was in charge of the um, rebuilding of the aircraft and uh, um, Bill Duncan and I don't remember exactly what, what about Jill McCormick was she she was one of his staff persons right. she was I think she was the first person he hired actually um, I've heard I've heard her name. Yeah. Others have mentioned it. She's deceased now, though. Oh yes, okay. some time ago. Uh -huh. Actually, she had to take medical leave, which she was really angry about. But she had rheumatoid arthritis really bad, and they covered for her for several uh -huh. years. That's before. not good stuff. No, no. 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 Um, um, was I started? Anything? Uh, could you talk? Would you want to make a co couple comments about Carrie Quad about some of the activities? The residence house has changed a lot. They used to oh, have like the winter some. whispers and. Dining within the mm -hmm. facility. We went to so many formals. I was tired of going <laughs> to formal dances and things. And, and uh, I, I have to laugh as I recall because the students were always so polite and would always, you know, pull our chairs out and seat us and all. About the last time we went to something like that, we they had a, a cafe buffet line and they, we weren't served at the table. But I, I can remember just laughing to myself because the kids at our table beat us to the line. <laughs> so it had changed dramatically. Uh, oh. um, a, a few times we had some of the kids from the unit hall or the whatever. They, you get East, to use West, some, of the, the North, some of the halls, like the we uh, would back have them, are assigned to have them out, I'm talking to so Have yeah. them out and have uh, an activity at our house and they would always bring the food I mean I can remember them bringing all the corn on the cob and and stuff the grill and stuff and that's fine and they like to do like to pitch in yeah, yeah. Um, and we did that a few times um, but um, the last couple of years that Jim was a fat fellow he was beginning to his dementia was getting so bad that he didn't visit with the guys and I just, you know, after a couple of years of that, I, yeah. we just quit going because, I mean, I, I enjoyed visiting sure. with him, but they would have liked to have visited with him, sure. so they were just being tolerant of us. So, That's and, okay, yeah. Um, how about the Aviation Man of the Year? He got that award. And then you mentioned another one that he just got that uh, I don't have a note on. Well, I don't remember now exactly what order these things are in. But there was a, a new one that uh, recently was in the last year or two. Was it the Indiana Aviation? 
That was in 1977, but she told me that it was some scholarship or something that was given. This past year. Okay. Yeah, talk about that one then. Well, then that's all associated. Oh, here. That's okay. all right here. Um, in 1977, he was made the end. Right, yeah. And um, this, was, it, this was a list of the guys, the people that were made Aviation Men of the Year, and his was in 77. That's very nice. And here was a note I had, oh, maybe I put it over there, that I had from the young lady uh -huh. um, here. Oh. And the, the, this was awarded in Jim's memory, and is it this oh, name this of the student the, that, was, That's that very received nice. it. That's yeah. very nice. Those are really nice to mm -hmm. do things like that, and then you know, the family can in, in benefit by that. That's this nice. was, he was awarded, let's see, elect, up here in 1970 edition of Outstanding Ed Educators of America. Okay. But I don't know, but I think this is referring to the same thing. And then you the can chime in if, anytime, Vicki, if you mm -hmm. want to make any comments. Please do. Okay. And then um, there was something that Birch Bay had read into the, um, um, I can't even say it. He had seen this in the paper in the Indianapolis Star, so he had it read in the congressional record, and that's what that article is okay. about. That that's okay. a copy of, of what was in the congressional record. So, and that was aviation technology at Purdue University is one of the outstanding da da da. And here he used to head the National Aero School Council. Right. And I don't remember. Here he was given some award for the U University Aviation Association. And that's just the same right, as, uh, yeah. from um, Do you want to make a couple comments about the little activities after you retire about the airplanes? Particularly the one where I told her about the quickie too because something I read, he was commenting and saying it was very nice because Lucille took care of the meals, right? <laughs> Did some cooking. I, I didn't do a lot of cooking, but was, I, how, I what, did. Did this interest for building develop after he retired, or had he always had no, an interest? No, uh, he and Earl Hoover built. Oh, um, this the is first Earl, one was Earl that Hoover. Starduster, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Which uh, one 19th? is that Starduster? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, he and Earl Hoover built this while they he was still employed. Oh, okay. Um, and oh. that's a picture of it. Oh wow! And I've got a picture of it in there on the wall. You probably didn't see that, uh -huh. but this is a picture of Earl and and Jim. And they built this in seventy seven. I about to seventy two around there. Uh, they built yeah. it out in the tech Abe Tech hangar in the basement. They built right. in the basement. They had to clean out an area so they'd have place to build it. And uh, they used to take me out there in the evenings. I used to uh, get the impression I was helping him. He would give me. <laughs> jobs to do, which I later found out weren't really it was just <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, cutting scraps and stuff, but he, he told me one time as an adult that that was getting me out of my mother's hair for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you needed that. But, I mean, I needed that. But, anyway. but I remember having a lot of fun helping, oh, I helping put quotes around that. Sure, exactly. Well, then after he retired is when he built the Quickie Two, and that was when he built the in the, in the we he had a, a two car garage put on the back of our lot, and built it in that. So, mm -hmm. it, and he, it did fly, didn't it? Oh, absolutely! Yeah. He flew it to Oshkosh, which is the the annual the big uh, air right. show. Air well, show he, had, he flew this the Starduster to Oshkosh too. He went to Oshkosh every year, and so did Earl. When until he wasn't well. One of the things he used to do with when he was working and still flying the biplane was in the evenings. Mom could always tell when he came home from work that he had been flying because he always had a different, more relaxed look on his yeah. face. But there used to be a cafeteria in the the building at the airport where I that remember was that. a terminal. And, right, and yeah. I used to eat out there. It was great, yeah, you know? It was. Well, he, he would taxi the biplane over to the corner of the cafeteria and there would always be uh, students lined up and he would take them for rides and um, I don't know how many he'd get to take in an evening but he liked to practice touch and go landings and things so he yeah. would do that with them and then come back and change students and in fact there's a excuse me one one of them uh, reported later when mom and dad were at a 
uh, banquet, I think over in the Purdue Memorial Union, um, when the, many of the astronauts who are Purdue grads were back, and uh, one of those men came up and talked to Dad and said that he had been one of the young men that Dad had taken flying and that he had changed his career path because of that Isn't experience that nice? That's uh, nice. flying. And this is a story about that, but the guy's name was Don Williams. Okay, I couldn't remember who yeah, it was. Well, um, oh, he's in, one of the astronauts, uh -huh. isn't he, Don Williams? Isn't right. He? Yeah, sure. And he was one that Jim had taken for a ride in the Starduster. And um, he came back and spoke to the visitor center. He used to, I mean, maybe they still do have a dinner at the end of the year. And uh -huh. he was out at Something. the trails one spring. And sure. Don came back yeah, and was a speaker at that um, yeah. time. Yeah, and that's nice. Yeah, that was real. Yeah. Right. Um, well, the, any, let's see, I was trying to think. Um, the other, any uh, other activities that he did during retirement? Then did uh, did you move here after he retired? or? No. We, oh. No. We moved here just six, six years ago. Oh, okay. Um, we needed to move sooner, but because of his shop, I we I could not get him to move and one of my daughters and her husband in, in Connecticut came one spring and kind of helped force the issue and so we moved here and this was before his dementia had gotten too bad I mean it, he had already had problems but and he just couldn't give up his shop because you know oh. and that was his life I understand that but he wasn't really working in it anymore right. he um, would go out and putter maybe a half an hour or fix a lawnmower or something, but never worked at night or anything. After we moved away, we found what was the animal we had in the attic or the top of the. Oh, there was it. A, I can't remember a squirrel or a raccoon or a something. No, 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 no. Uh, Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Wildlife. <laughs> and, and what kind that only come out at night? So he was never out there at night. He didn't hear it. Because I said to the guy that was doing the rebuilding and stuff around the house, I said, well. Maybe it came after we moved away. He said, oh, no, it's been up there a long time. <laughs> but it, it's a nocturnal animal, I guess. and so it would only... Of some sort, you know, right? No. Yeah. I'll think of it. Yeah. Well, if I don't, it's not important. But um, let's, let's talk a little about the family. You have children. Vicki is here. You have other children. What, what do we they have, them come to go to Purdue? Children go to Purdue? We have four daughters. Okay. Uh, so he was king. He was, the, he was the man of the house. <laughs> he was the man of the house. My oldest daughter. I'm not sure he would say that. <laughs> and my oldest daughter went. You look at little, it differently. I understand. A little <laughs> bit point. to Purdue, and then she did some work at IU because she's artistic and wanted to go down there for the art part. Uh -huh. um, my second daughter, Nancy, the ones that live in Connecticut, were the was the first one to graduate from Purdue, and then daughter number three. Um, went to St. Elizabeth School of Nursing, um, and at that time they uh, did some of their coursework at Purdue. But um, and then Vicky was two, two, Vicky number the four. She has two okay. degrees from Purdue. Yeah. Okay. So and you're with Purdue at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so anyway, um, the second our second daughter met her husband at Purdue, and uh, he's. So we're we're kind of a Purdue family. They have sent all their kids back to Purdue. The third one is now a sophomore of, of that family. Is now a sophomore at Purdue. So, um, well, that's very nice. You got grandchildren that come here. That's nice. It's been a good yeah, yeah tradition. Children, I didn't family. hardly get to know as children because they live away. I mean, I'd see them maybe once. If I was lucky, the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. yeah. the grandchildren. Yeah. I, maybe I'd see them once or twice a year at the most. Uh, and now as teenagers and adults, I'm getting to know them better. And the one, the daughter that graduated in, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what she graduated, two and a half years she, ago, yeah. uh, in December, uh, had done her student teaching at Murdoch, and she's teaching fifth grade at Mur Murdoch at this point. So because of her being here and a student being here, I get to see that family from Connecticut more often <laughs> than I would if it was just me living here. Right. So. That works out nicely. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, how about um, uh, Purdue tradition, or and also any of your hobbies? Do you have anything that you a special interest? You mentioned bridge earlier, so you must. Uh, I still play, yeah. <laughs> probably too much bridge, but <laughs> I play quite a bit of bridge. Uh, My mother belonged to a bridge club when we were growing up, you know, and she used to have the people in, and so it's interesting. I was in a bridge group in that original housing we talked about. Sure. 
the black and whites. As I say, yeah. I play with one of one of the ladies now is my partner, and we play at Vinton Wood Bridge Group. But um, I'm still in another bridge group with her. And until the last couple of years, there have been three or four of us in that group. But one of them can't play anymore because of her husband's illness and stuff. So, uh, but that's very nice. You know, my, my hobbies really, as I was busy raising children, so I didn't do a lot of things. I did a lot through my church, mm -hmm. a lot through my church, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I did a. I was chairman of the Church Women United's food pantry for about seven years. This was after you graduated, or about mm -hmm. the time, um, and I actually got Jim involved with that as he retired. Uh -huh. um, actually, when I was the going to take over as chairman of that, he said, well, only if you'll let me make you an official flow chart of positions, so he did. And we still use a lot of it today, <laughs> actually, and that's been, that's been almost 20 years ago. But yeah. um, anyway, as he retired, he would help us in any way. He was a buyer for the food pantry once a month, and he would buy bread one, once a month. And, uh, and if I had someone that sh couldn't show up to work at one of the food pantry sites, he would go at the drop of a hat, even if he had his greasy... Uh, airplane building car so clothes on where you or I probably would at least comb our hair and change our clothes, you know. <laughs> okay, I came. I come as this. As this. <laughs> he, that's right, because <laughs> he was he was a very compassionate person, and and to him, I used to tease him when he'd work at the food pantry because because he'd give away the store, especially if they came with a child. <laughs> but anyway, we we did enjoy that that together to sure. be able to do that together yeah, I think so. um, he was never one to he did play cards with bridge with me back when we were in the air force and uh, he also um, played a little bit when we first came here when i was in a group but he did not like to play games he would rather build things and stuff so hands -on person. Yeah, yeah hands-on type of person right. so i i'm sure tom probably told you that the history of how the school came about because aeronautics was giving up the hands-on type of, of yeah, um, and some of those things when I when I helped Don Petron uh, doing oh, some he, research yeah. on that for the thing I, I got would, sort of in well I did a lot the Purdue file is newspaper articles and so I knew a little bit about it it helps and, uh, and also some of the Amelia things her involvement with it and what the airport and things of that right. sort so right. that's been so. it was very helpful as background information right. mm -hmm. What about a Purdue, a Purdue tradition? Do you have a Purdue tradition? Do we have a Purdue tradition? Sports? Did you go to any Mom, go to school? Mom and I've been football. We're football fans well, then that's, for years. Well, that's, that's, that's fine. And we're not going go? this year, but... <laughs> no, and not, I just decided... She was out of town two times last year, and I was sick one. We missed three of the games, and I said, you know, and the first two are always so hot. <laughs> that's right. I, I well know that. So um, we we're did, still fans, though. We're still fans. Yes. Well, we, we were going here a couple of weeks ago, but I ended up Vicky shirt. went. Hmm? The, the shirt they're selling, you know, the gold strike. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. This is the one they've been in. Oh! That's the one, one they're selling this year. For Isn't this great? <laughs> Remember two years ago it was blackout, yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm big for this, you know. How about <laughs> well, uh, anyway. an outstanding event? Do you have one of those you'd like to share with us? And then I'll let you do closing. Any thing that you'd like to say in closing. Would you say okay. Loretta's visit was one of our outstanding things? That was a unique event. Uh, maybe not I, outstanding, but it very different. Oh, you, I you told you on the phone I'll, I'll about Loretta Young coming yes, to put her yes. son, to start her son in school in Jim's department. Where the department. researcher was a famous movie star. Yes. <laughs> I won't be here when they listen to Jim it. Jim so came home for lunch one day. I had curlers in my hair and was in a house dress. And he always came home for lunch, by the way. Uh, and he said, would it be all right if I brought Loretta Young home for lunch, for dinner tonight? I thought he was kidding. <laughs> this was at noon. <laughs> she was yet in diapers. She was only not, nine months. Yeah. She was not even a year old. So I had also a baby on hand. So. I said, well, yeah, of course. And he, there was a 
a gentleman. Did you know who the name? Did it recognize of you? Of course. Okay, okay. Um, there was a gentleman traveling with her, and I can't remember his name anymore. So, um, anyway, they came for lunch and for dinner. Um, dinner and their son. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I had my dining room table, which was a drop leaf table. We had a, a small den, paneled room, and I had my dining room table. The table took up most of the room, okay? <laughs> I had Sharon at the Rustic Bouquet make me a flower arrangement. Well, Sharon doesn't do little flower arrangements. Oh, no, like I, this. I've used Rustic Bouquet <laughs> a lot. I know. <laughs> when I told you on the phone that, that I only had six place setting in my sterling, and my neighbor down the street had this friend had the same pattern, so she loaned me the hers. So we had <laughs> enough solar. We had a nice time, really. She came in, and I, I've told people she was as easy, easier to entertain sometimes than my own sisters. So yeah. she I, always uh, impressed me as being that kind of low, you know, in the movies I saw her. She just she was impressed with the baby. Of course, she had never been able to raise her children herself, and. Uh, um, For the researchers, tell them why she was on campus. Her son was her son was being admitted in one of Jim's classes courses at at the airport, okay. and, uh, um, and and they I, wanted to tour the campus and sure see. okay. And she actually was staying at the Union. She ended up, where did she end up moving to? I can't remember, but somebody recognized her on campus, and she they did they went out to to. Um, Oh gosh, what's a little town out here outside for breakfast one morning? They, and she even got recognized out there. So. But the dinner night she had come to our house for dinner. Uh, when she left, she says, "Well, can we come back tomorrow night if I buy the pork chops?" So, like, and she did, but but I mean, she did come back the next night. But it uh, anyway, she was complimenting Jim and I on having the baby, and she went back with Jim to change her diaper and all that sort of thing. So. But did her son ultimately, did he come to Purdue? He did. Oh, yeah. Oh. He was here. Um, it was interesting. It was the first time Purdue had ever closed because of a snowstorm. And he was the only one that got out and got to class. He lived in an apartment, and he hadn't heard the news that the campus was closed, shut down. And when he went home for spring break, he didn't come back. <laughs> so, and he had come, I think, in the I can't remember if he came. Did he come as a freshman? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They lived in California. He right. Came from California. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> they lived, in, and he had a band, and you know, and a Other surf, surfboard, <laughs> and all that sort. Of, this was I was telling you. I had this note from that she had sent Jim. This is from Loretta oh, Young. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to read it, but that's nice. Any other, uh, Vicki, or anything else that you'd like to say in closing? That well, sure? something that I'll try to describe quickly that I thought was just neat. Uh, when the Aviation Technology uh, School had their 50th anniversary event, well, they did several things, but... Um, there was a couple of... One, uh, yeah, three? Not too long ago. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up, but I want to say maybe 04 or... Oh, five. It would have been I always five. thought it was an awful year because we started the school in 55 and they had it like it was 56 yeah. so whatever 50 mm -hmm. years from well anyway it was the six. event it would and have been six. Oh, we six. were at the the dinner over at the, the Purdue Memorial Union in the south ballroom or the north one of the ballrooms and dad and we were sitting at a table up towards the stage and with the oh, Dean DePew and some other folks from the uh, college and somebody arrived late and there was an open seat at our table and so mm -hmm. they seated this young woman at our table and it turned out that she was a graduate of the aviation technology program and they had invited alumni to come to this event um, she was a pilot of it was a c-41 transport one of the, I'm going to probably get the number of the plane wrong, but one of those huge transport planes. And we shifted the seating around so that she could sit next to my dad. And uh, she was flying, she was a civilian flying for the military, and she would fly troops into Iraq. And um, it was just chilling for those of us at the table to sit and listen to my old dad, who had started the program that this young woman graduated from um, 
to listen to the two of them share war stories. Hers, hers from war. the current war, right. his from World War II, both of them with similar abilities as pilots. Um, and at the time, you know, this was at the end of, near the end of his life, he probably was 85 or 86, right. and had some dementia issues. Although his long-term memories always stayed pretty sharp, it was his short-term where it was mm-hmm. trouble. So he probably never did remember her name, but he was pretty clear on the stories that he was telling her from his sure. days flying and days starting at school. But uh, we all were just mesmerized. It kind of silenced the conversation at the table because people just wanted to listen to the two of them. To the two of them. Sure. And I, I came away from that thinking, we didn't need any of the pomp and circumstance that went on on the stage that night. If we could have just taken that conversation and, put and it moved on stage. it up at the st- onto the stage so everyone in the room could have heard it represented what they were celebrating the the graduate history of the school the history of the school the graduate who felt so um, she was tearful when she was thanking dad for what he had done Um, so the graduate of the school who felt compelled to come back for the event and she was a new grad, maybe a two or three years out. Yeah, she you wasn't. Know, she's doing pretty well in a yeah. short period of time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And right. she was beautiful. She looked like a model. It just yeah. I, it, the comparison between him like and his age, thing. and yeah, great. So, and to think of the size of the plane that she piloted and the stuff she was telling us about what it took to get yeah. troops safely in and out of those locations. Um, so yeah, that, I wanted nice. to share that. That was. One, that brings up one point, and I didn't ask Tom this. What was, how did your husband feel about the, the accident that happened out at the airport where the student was killed, remember? He, was, he had, I think, been retired by that time. The, oh, uh, I don't even remember. Do you? The, the student and the instructor that happened in the um, late 90s, early 2000, they would take off. It was a, a training situa- yeah. situation. I don't student. remember she that. She was from, well, she had also, she, you know, the... Um, annual flight in the summer. She had been the pilot of that plane the previous summer. And was or the co-pilot was going to be the pilot. Uh-huh. And, but the accident that happened out there. That didn't yeah. happen at our airport, though. Yes, it did. Where was right. I? Yeah, I was going yeah. I don't have any recollection yeah. of that. And I don't remember and Dad's it, yeah. comment on it, no. if he had any. It made a big, it, and it made a big impact. And, of course, the other thing, too, that made a big impact on here, and he probably did, is after 9-11, everything just, you know, took a whole turn on that. Mm-hmm. She was Best out west. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean, I was stuck out west, home. <laughs> oh, traveling. Oh, and, oh. Uh, yeah. But any uh, other comment, any the closing? I thing? didn't know if you know the story about Rosemary Miram's uh, first pilot, girl, lady pilot that graduated from a program. Did you know that? No, go ahead. Well, I don't know that I can verbally tell you. Just I tell. just have the story about it okay. there. Um, I just remember that they were, you know, really pleased to have her, and she went off flying a military airplane after that, after she graduated. The other one, that name I mentioned was that, um, uh, Jill McCormick, but she was not Well, she was a staff person. This one here? Um, this one here? I'm not sure. We can look for it in a minute. Here, oh, pull it. There we go. Yeah, okay. That, that's the yeah. whole story, yeah. Yeah. You can make a comment on it then. Um, she was the well, she was one of the, f- the students the receiving flight instruction was this Rosemary Marims, M-E-R-I-M-S, a uh-huh. senior, the first to earn her B.S. with a major emphasis in professional piloting. Um, and then she went, let's see, she is presently receiving detailed instruction in a Boeing 707, which was a big aircraft at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but she was one of our first women that graduated Very nice. so, from the Very, program. That's very so. good. It's nice to have. It looks like, look what McNeely there. Is that George? Uh, George McNally, McNally yeah. and Jim. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. right, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's. Um, I don't know. <laughs> We've any, not covered any a lot. Any other comments you think, or we covered pretty much? Anything? And you, after he retired, you decided to stay out in the community. And some people had no okay. thought. Had no thought of leaving good, the community. Good. Okay. No. They're they're both were both so connected with their church and their friends from Purdue and right and the dog yeah. doesn't want to be relocated yeah <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, so I and we, to, and we I love know. it here yeah I want to thank you Vicki and Lucille it's been very nice my pleasure thank you very mm. much
Welcome. Um, 